Welcome. This is uh, 2049 B2, and we're going to talk about oscillations and wave terminology. So, this is an important diagram. It shows side by side the way we represent oscillations and waves, and there is some confusion here. If we look just at oscillations, this is what we did last time. Well, we have one particle oscillating up and down in time. And so this diagram here is a graph. It's an abstraction. It represents all the positions of the particle vertically, plotted against the time horizontally. And yeah, it looks like a sine curve, but it's a sine curve in y position versus time. If I look to the right and I look at a wave, what I see, so this is a transverse wave, for example, what I see is y position versus x position. So this is a snapshot of the side of the wave at one instant in time. So on the left we have a graph of one particle's motion in time and on the right we have a snapshot of all the particles at one instant in time and the problem is that the graphs look pretty much the same unless you pay attention. So there's a lesson here about always looking at the axes to make sure you interpret graphs correctly. And then splitting in your mind oscillations from waves. They tend to all get confused together. Let's look at this oscillation side. Look at the left hand side. It's a graph of y position versus time and it's one particle's history over time. And we can define various things on this graph. I can talk about the amplitude and the amplitude is from the equilibrium position to either one of the extremes. Now in some areas they'll talk about peak to peak amplitude which is from the very top extreme to the bottom extreme and so the peak to peak amplitude is twice what we call amplitude. And the fact is in some areas because you're always dealing with peak to peak amplitude you start calling it amplitude and there's no confusion until you talk to people from another area. So you've got to be a little bit careful about amplitude and just bear in mind do they mean peak to peak or do they mean from the equilibrium position to the extreme? A simple mistake like that can, can cause confusion. So amplitude is the maximum displacement of the object from equilibrium. And then, well, this is a graph of time horizontally. And so we can say the period is the time for one complete cycle of the object. So to go from the crest to the crest takes a certain amount of time and I could say well that time is one period and if the wave is slow the period could be five seconds five hours five years if the wave is fast it could be five milliseconds five nanoseconds etc we tend to like numbers to be in a convenient range that we can visualize and so uh, very short periods tend to give us small numbers and so I think it's only human nature that people start talking about the inverse of the period which is the frequency and the frequency is the number of cycles or oscillations per second so frequency the numerical value for frequency is 1 over the numerical value for, for uh, period period measured in seconds, frequency measured in hertz, named after the famous scientist. Now, when I was a student, it was cycles per second, which was self-evident. And now they've named it after a famous scientist. Well, not now, but 30 years ago, 40 years ago, they named it after a famous scientist. I think that obscures the meaning, to be honest. I wish they'd not done it, but they did it. Um, so... Uh, remember that Hertz is cycles per second. And then, because each cycle is one circle in the uniform circular motion, 
So let's 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 think of that. Each cycle we went up and then we went down and went round again. As I go around once, I'm going up and down and round again. So each circle is one wave cycle. So I might want to talk not about how many cycles per second, how many hertz, but how many radians per second. A radian is about a sixth of a, of a cycle. It's just a different form of unit. It's just a different unit. But we have the angular frequency, and the angular frequency, omega, is the number of radians in a circle, which is 2 pi, over the period. Up here, the frequency is the number of cycles divided by the period. What we're basically saying is, well, one cycle is 2 pi radians. So it's just two ways of looking at the same thing. Um, and this would be measured in radians per second. So amplitude, period, frequency, angular wave frequency. Uh, angular frequency. Make sure you're, you're comfortable with those. And then let's look on the wave side. Well, a wave is the graph of y position versus x position for a family of oscillators. And it's an instant of many particles. It's what they're doing now. And we can again talk about amplitude. So we can say the amplitude is from the equilibrium position to either extreme. So that's the same. And now, of course, we're not talking about a time horizontal axis. We're talking about a distance horizontal axis. And so we measure the wavelength from the crest to the crest. How far is it? And that would be the wavelength measured in meters. Well, if it's a slow, long wave, it could be five meters, five kilometers, five light years. If it's a short wave, it could be five nanometers, five uh, uh, picometers. And again, we like to have numbers of a certain size. And so it's only human nature that we're going to uh, take one over the wavelength. And we're going to call this the uh, a wave number. So wave number for a wave is like a frequency for an oscillation. It's got a weird symbol. It's got this, this symbol here. And you just practice it and you get used to it. <laughs> and then, yeah, because each... So this is one cycle over the wavelength, one meter, if you like, over the wavelength. And what we can do is we can say, well, you know, we can have one cycle, which is like one wave. And we can, rather than measuring it in the number of waves per meter, we can have the number of uh, uh, um, radians. And so we get the angular wave number K which is 2 pi, not over the period, but over the wavelength. Can you see the similarity? We have A, we have uh, period, we have frequency, and we have angular frequency. And we have A, we have wavelength, we have uh, um, wave number and we have angular wave number and if I know that my period equals 1 over my frequency by analogy I can say that my wavelength is equal to 1 over my wave number and if I know that my uh, um, uh, if I know that my way, uh, um, my angular frequency is equal to 2 pi f. I know that my angular wave number is equal to 2 pi times the wave number. Can you see that? So um, uh, analogies are really useful here. Again, the math is not hard, it's just unfamiliarity. So spend a lot of time on this slide. Let's have a look at some 
mathematics of this situation. Uh, what is the period of an oscillation that completes five cycles each second? Well, there's a couple of ways we can look at this actually. We can actually one cycle, two cycle, three cycle, four cycle, five cycles. And we saw that's one second. And I want to divide this up into however many bits it is, and it's five bits. So by conceptually, I'd say that my period is equal to one second over five, which equals 0 0.2 seconds. So I did it conceptually. The other way is to use your math and say five cycles each second. Oh, my frequency is equal to five cycles each second. That's five hertz. So my period is equal to one over my frequency. So this equals one over five, which equals 0 0.2 seconds. So in one case, I did it conceptually. And in the other case, I did it mathematically. What is the frequency of an oscillation that completes five cycles each second? So again, I visualize one, two, three, four, five. This is one second. And the frequency is how many cycles per second? So that would be, oh, there's five cycles in this second. So that's five hertz. Alternatively, I can say, what do I know? Five cycles, so frequency is equal to five hertz. And hold on, it's asking me for frequency. So frequency equals five hertz. And then what is the angular frequency of an oscillation that completes five cycles each second? Well, I know that my frequency is equal to 5 hertz. And I know that my, uh, um, well, my omega is equal to 2 pi f. I'm looking for my angular frequency. What is the angular frequency? So this is going to be 2 pi times 5, which equals 10 pi uh, radians per second. Cool. 10 pi radians per second. Cool. Um, notice I went to the math there. I'm more comfortable with that. <laughs> the um, uh, I'm just more comfortable with it. So I made, a, I made my, I, I put a list of what I knew. I found out what I wanted. I know this equation really well. And so it helps me a lot. Okay. Let's look at the next one. So then what is the wavelength of a wave that completes two cycles each meter? So there's one cycle and there's another cycle. And this is one meter. So I can say, oh, well, the wavelength is just going to be one of these guys. So lambda equals 0 0.5 meters. I just conceptually. Or alternatively, I can say I want to find my wavelength. And I know it completes two cycles each meter. Oh, that's my wave number. Two cycles per meter. So that means that if uh, uh, lambda equals one over the wave number. If you're not comfortable with that, remember that this is like frequency and that is like period. And we can say frequency equals, sorry, period equals one over frequency. So again, I'm using analogies all the time. They really help. They really help tremendously. So then this wavelength equals 1 over 2, which equals 0 0.5 meters. So that would be that guy, both cases. What is the wave number of a wave that completes two cycles? So we have that, and then we have that, and this is 1 meter. 
and the wave number is so the wave number is the number of cycles or waves per meter and so it's going to be two so this is two meters to the minus one cycles as no units so it's going to be one over meters meters to the minus one on this side what I can say is all oh, right I'm looking for the wave number and I know oh yeah it's given me that the wave number equals two <laughs> meters to the minus one and again you know it's the same thing and then what is the angular wave number of a wave that completes two meters so I say well my angular wave number I gotta know that that's K K is used an awful lot sometimes people do different K's for different things you know you can do whatever you like in your own handwriting as long as it's recognizable as a K but don't get confused by K's because you're just writing them all the same way if it means a different thing write it slightly differently so my uh, uh, um, angular wave number well let's think about this omega equal 2 pi f whoops so uh, this is going to be 2 pi it's not going to be f of course it's going to be the wave number so this is going to be 2 pi times the wave number is going to be 2 so that equals 4 pi and it's going to be radians per meter because it's angular wave number wave number is in one over meter this is radians per meter so this would be four pi radians per meter do you notice how I went to my math more as I felt less comfortable and that's 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 what math is useful for it's like it's the formality it's so you don't get things wrong but just by the by you know I think it's really useful so link period with wavelength link frequency with wave number link angular frequency with angular wave number and if you know this side really well you can always work out that side there's my tip for the day okay thank you